Welcome to the University of Guam and to the first in Robert Underwood's presidential lecture series. And of course, featured tonight, we have a chair of the Health Armed Services Committee, Ike Skelton. <laughs> and one Congresswoman, Madeline Boyalia. We also have joining us tonight uh, the Consul General from Korea, Chong Il Lee. The Consul General from Japan, Tamio Kumino. The Consul General from Taiwan, Vin Tsai. Bruce we have Justice Philip Carbolito with us. And we have Justice Catherine Merriman, also an Athens here in the Division of One, and Judge Anita Sicola. Who else is here? We have Senator S. Paul Bone. And uh, from our fourth region, we have Alina Anderson. We have General Bice from Big Hill. And also joining us is Captain Miller, commander of the Naval Regional Medical Center. And we also have the Chief of Police, Paul Cuba. Thank you for joining us tonight, and now I would like to introduce the 10th President of the University of Guam, Robert Underwood. Uh, thank you so much. I don't know if she was introduced, but President Mary Apata. She's so close to us, we just think we work together all the time. Um, the Chairman of the uh, House Armed Services Committee, uh, the Honorable Ike Skelton, has been a member of the U.S. Congress since 1977. This means that he has known all four delegates from Guam, including uh, Mr. Wampak, uh, General Blas, myself, and of course Congresswoman Bordano. Uh, he has been a mentor to all of us, and I will not ask him which one was his favorite. <laughs> He represents the 4th District of Missouri, and when you are a member of any activity he is responsible for, you learn quickly to call it Missouri. This includes the capital city of Jefferson City and major military facilities. He invited me to go on my very first uh, congressional delegation, and we visited Europe, and we all learned a lot from the chairman. I also learned that he knew a man by the name of Dickie Elliott, who was my father's first cousin, as a fellow student at Point Worth Military Academy. From that early Guam connection, he has made his presence felt here in Guam through countless military authorization provisions in legislative form uh, that most of us are unfamiliar with, but certainly uh, Congresswoman Bernard and myself are very familiar with. He has been a senior Democrat on the committee since 1999 and became chair in the last Congress. Congressman Skelton is a strategic thinker whose ideas are grounded in the day-to-day -day understanding of military operations. He wants to know what is being experienced by the ordinary sailor, soldier, marine, or airman. He also has a firm grasp of military history and frequently informs us about how great military minds of the past made decisions that shape our present. We understand as we learn from his own words that the United States is the quote, indispensable nation, unquote, in world affairs since World War II. But he has also clearly called for a national strategy that reestablishes America's credibility in the world's eyes to reinvigorate the belief that the United States is a credible and just nation 
and that we intend our efforts to serve interests beyond our own. Throughout all the complications of national strategic alliance, performance budgeting in the Pentagon, the push for more interagency cooperation abroad, he remains the very best friend of every person in uniform. He is a tireless advocate of quality of life issues for service personnel and ensuring that our officer corps remains well educated and well rounded and not just well trained. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege and honor to introduce the Honorable Ike Skelton. Welcome to the University of Florida. Thank you very much, Bob. I appreciate this wonderful uh, introduction. I can, uh, you have to hear it, give this lecture, I can hardly wait to hear what I'm going to say. I have to hear it very much for it. You know, Bob's been such a good friend for the years, and we've been together, and it's a thrill to be here at the Hidge University, and it's also a double thrill to be with them. On the arts of the big winners, and uh, we're traveling together. It's not our first trip together. As a matter of fact, Don Johnson, she loved Florida. In, intensely, she loved Florida. I guess it was about three years ago we had scheduled a stop over here for a quick luncheon on the way to the Far East, and we scheduled two hours. But we stretched it to three hours. And uh, we received the wrath of this lovely lady for not spending as much time as we should in Guam. That father was spending two nights here today. You know, inviting a politician to speak is sometimes a little on the chancy side. A small town back home in Missouri, but there was a, a race for the county collector. And the three men running for the race in the primary, and they all won the votes of this large rural church. And they were invited to come to the church and to address the congregation. Well, they came to the church on one Sunday morning, and the minister said, what we're going to do is rather than let you speak, I'm going to ask each one of you a question. And the congregation will decide who they will support based upon the answer to your question. He turned to the politician and what? And he said, assume you're lying in your casket. And a passerby walks by and looks down on your remains. What do you want that passerby to say? The first politician says, What want that passerby to say, Who is a good man? He turns to the same politician, You're lying there in your coffin, and a passerby comes by, What do you want that passerby to say as he looks down on your body? The same politician says, I want you to say, He was a family man. He turns to the third politician. He says, you're lying there in your coffin, and a passerby walks by and looks 